you know we really love our jets at G.I. Joburg. So it's time to hold another underappreciated gem from the 90s up to the light. It's the Ghost Striker X-16 and it's a whole lot more than a flashlight wrapped in a jet. It's a nimble multi-role fighter. And it has a considerably smaller footprint than its avian brethren. And it has considerably smaller landing gear as well. You've got the Sky Striker with the superb rubber wheels, the Phantom X-19 with its four tires, and four more, and four more than that. And then this thing, pathetic. Look at these piddly things. With no crew to act as counterweights, the weight of the battery box tips it back onto its tail skeg. But it's got a detailed cockpit. You bet it does! Textured seats, sculpted seat belts visible when the seat is unoccupied, multiple screens, these details that look like side stick controls. It's amazing! It's the best cockpit interior G.I. Joe jets have. And yes, it even beats the Phantom X-19. And of course, another ace. But what a great uniform. It's total realism and it's green. Details picked out with black on his G-suit and gold for his lamp. Helmet is a two-piece affair with the mask plugging into his front and the rubberized clasps fastening to his helmet. You can totally have it hang off to one side. Don't take off my visor! Ah! Devil eyes! The G-suit is very realistically sculpted. It would be nice if the different textures boasted different colors, but for a pilot figure who's going to be in the cockpit more than not, I can live with fewer paint apps. The eyes aren't so bad. They totally bring out his hair color. And here's a holdout pistol with US sculpted in the holster. He came with the same Uzi you would have gotten originally with 1986's Low Light. Pity we never got the more appropriate pistol from the box art. But you can't fault a toy for giving you an extra accessory. So apart from going redhead and red eye, Ace is also looking a little buffer in his 90s incarnation. But I do like this update. He feels immediately more robust. If this plan included a parachute, I'd have no reservations about tossing him skyward and having him sink to the bricks. So the eternal debate rages on. Who should sit backseat on this stick? Maybe an examination of its weapons will give us a clue. The gun is a massive 35mm, that's what she said, sculpted simply into this nacelle. And a lot more realistically sculpted than World War II muzzles over here and whatever this is meant to be on top of the pilot's legs. So it's the best of the Joe Bunch, but not the Cobra. It's got two anti-aircraft Sidewinder missiles, four Phoenix missiles, and two laser-guided missile-targeting blast lights. Blast lights? Does that make them beam weapons? Lasers? They're intended to be more than targeting lights. They'll be made clear when we look at them in action. And this wouldn't be the first Joe jet with laser cannons. The X-19 had a pair of dual lasers. But I think you probably know where we're going with this. If there's a sophisticated laser system on board, the man you want in the back seat is most definitely sci-fi. Made doubly appropriate by his concurrent assignment as the Star Brigade's Starfighter pilot. The fuselage is impressively sculpted. Canopy release handle. All the F-16 signature panel lines are faithfully reproduced. And then a big old G.I. Joe logo sculpted on top. Not sure it was all that necessary, what with the stickers proclaiming it to be G.I. Joe beside. But can you fault more sculpt detail? The exhaust nozzle sculpting is particularly strong, but it would have been nice if it was further picked out by a dark shade of grey, like the Sky Striker. And a squadron badge with a skull is always a winner, more so when it incorporates this toy's unique feature, the crosshairs. I don't mind the paper stickers, we're not about to drag a jet fighter through the mud, but I do mind the black backing on the kill marks. Before the switch to paper, the backing would have been clear and wouldn't have interrupted this pretty canopy. Boo hoo. But here's an unexpected bonus. There's a screw hole in the perfect place for our trusty tow vehicle. It's a tighter fit than the older Sky Striker, but it works fine enough. Beep. And there goes that tail skeg, mere scale inches from the deck. Quick, fold this shameful neon excuses for landing gear away. Folding down the handle immediately activates the lights and sounds. They apparently go non-stop for four and a half minutes. I stopped timing after six minutes, 
and no automatic stopping in sight. And I just love the sound effects. It's like they were ripped from an 8-bit video game, like Top Gun, or maybe even Afterburner. We've already located some ground targets. Overkill commanding a party bus down there on a Cobra Rage. First Phoenix missile falls short. Weak spring. Not so with the second. Reload the launchers. There are more targets. A sneaky hammerhead eats a missile. Cobra polluters at the water supply? Not for long. Enemy aircraft incoming. Switch to Sidewinder armament. Set the targeting computer for Rattlers. Fire! The computer seemed to think that there were two of them. Guess we got lucky. Hurricane incoming. Configure the targeting computer and fire the laser cannon. Hurricanes are tough, but eventually he's down. New target acquired. This is called a mercy kill. But someone's on our six. It's a condor. Switch the targeting computer to engage the threat. Wait, what is this? A generic Cobra bomber? Why couldn't they just use the signature outline of the Cobra condor? Bizarre. But hopefully we can still outmaneuver it. Straight to the deck and punch the afterburners. Whew, that got him off our six. A lovely inclusion on this toy and one of its most endearing are the accurate nav lights, red on the port side, green on starboard, which alternate realistically. And the cockpit instrument light adds a terrific glow to the interior. Light adds so much life to the brain of the plane. And it's a constant light which will go for as long as she's got juice in those batteries. Four double A's housed in the handle to be precise. After dark, the projector feature is a blast. The bulb is a little underpowered to be photographed in action like in the commercial. But to the human eye, you'll be able to make it out against the blank surface even while moving at 500 knots. The image of whichever craft is selected on the wheel is projected through the light housed in the central intake. Or you can select the blank crosshairs to illuminate your own enemy targets for destruction. Pressing the trigger on the handle eight individual times will cause an explosion sound effect and the image to blink and disappear. Then you can either select a new target or attack a similar target. But decide quickly because this relentless game starts afresh within seconds. Perfect toy would have added a bit of exhaust glow, but perfection's overrated, right?
So, an underappreciated gem or what? A detailed two-seat cockpit, big, beautiful, tinted, accurately one-piece canopy glass, a top-notch included figure with the best flight suit helmet and combo the vintage line ever produced. Piddly landing gear and neon missiles and launches in the losses column, but the sound and lights are actually wins, and a novel feature in the Joe world. Of course, you can easily choose to ignore them too. Its compact size is an asset, but it is solidly built, has a good heft, partly due to the batteries, and it feels Joe tough. Got to get tough, yo Joe! And one more thing, we're mere weeks away from leaving for JoeCon. We still need a bit more money, and if you're in a position to donate, please consider checking out our GoFundMe. Links on the page. Yo Joe. Berg.